Hey friends, welcome to Chine Coaching. Rob here, and in this video, we're gonna have an international student talk about how their full-time job as a developer with SAP in the Bay Area, in the Silicon Valley Tech Hub here in America, and give you some great tips to help you with your job search and just professional journey here in America. Grab some chai and join us. <sighs> Thanks so much for tuning in, friends. I got my friend Rakesh again. Uh, Rakesh has already shared his story about studying here in America. He did a master's in software engineering at International Technical University, so be sure to go check out that video. Learned a lot, we'll have the links for that. And now Rakesh is gonna be sharing about his professional journey, working for SAP in Palo Alto, um, in California, in the Bay Area, uh, doing uh, developing. So Rakesh, go ahead and briefly introduce yourself again, buddy. Hey everyone, I'm Rakesh Ramakrishnan. I'm a developer at SAP Ariba. I did my master's in software engineering at ITU. That's me. Awesome, and when did you uh, start your full-time job here in the US? So I started my full-time role in the last week of February here in Palo Alto, California. Great, so just a couple months ago. Yeah, just a few months ago, yeah. but it feels like pretty long. Mm -hmm. So are they giving you a hard time as a fresher, any ragging or hazing? Oh, no, no, no. <laughs> so it's like, my team is kind of pretty cool because like this is my first time um, like into the system. Mm -hmm. So, and the system is like pretty complex and like there's, there are a lot to learn. So my teammates are super helpful. And like every time I go to them, like uh, they'll sit down with me and explain to me. But right now with the, with all this work from home situation, it's kind of hard, but, but still like uh, they're spending some time with me so that uh, I can keep up pace with them. Awesome. Well, before we talk about how you got this job, do you have any prior mm -hmm. work experience or did you do any internships during your master's before starting with SAP? Yeah, so back in India, uh, after I uh, graduated from my undergrad, I worked as a uh, software developer for about a year. Mm -hmm. um, and then once I started my master's degree, I did an internship for two trimesters in a company called Jade Global as a NetSuite developer. And so I, I was doing that until January. And then in February, once I graduated, uh, I made the switch. Now, what everyone wants to know about is, how did you get a job? Uh, what were the things that helped you or what was kind of your story to get this job with SAP? So with SAP, I would say um, the process is pretty simple. Uh, you just uh, do an application either by yourself or through a referral. And then uh, the recruiter reaches out to you and the recruiter will be the one and only point of your contact. And uh, all the recruiters at SAP are super helpful and uh, they'll go, go over with you all the the requisites and everything that you have to do. And then for a developer role, it will be that you'll have uh, three or four rounds of uh, technical interview. And then you will have a final conversation with the uh, recruiter regarding the package. And that's about it. Awesome. Now, did you have any referrals or just did a online application? So for this role, it was my online application. And I just applied online and uh, the recruiter reached out to me and uh, the same process all over again. Rakesh, what is, I mean, obviously today, day to day now is a little different, um, you know, not going mm -hmm. to the office, but uh, just, just tell people a little bit, what is it like being a developer, you know, for a big tech company in the Bay Area? What's it kind of like, you know, working here in America in a full-time job with SAP? If the student doesn't already have a prior experience in India or from the place where they are from, I would say um, everything will be kind of new to them the way an enterprise works, the way the systems work, the way the platform is coded, it'll all be new. It was new for me, uh, even though I had a, a year of experience back in India. So there'll be a lot of learning, more learning than my masters. <laughs> <laughs> and the actual effort you have to uh, put it here because uh, like in masters, uh, you study, you get good grades and that's about it. But here, that's not how the case is. Most of the time, the problems that come to you are unique in nature, and you'll have to sit with the problem to find a good solution and then come up with the code. So most of the time, you don't directly go to the system and start coding. It's more analyzing and then see the core of the problem. Then the final step is the coding process. So before you even start, uh, you know, like uh, start the job, you should know that uh, preparation and getting your basics uh, to the teeth is more important to get a good role in the US. Hmm. And what kind of project are you and your team working on right now? So we are in a um, sourcing product 
called uh, Ariba Sourcing, and it basically helps um, the manufacturing firms and uh, uh, other enterprises to source their materials. So we call, we have something called bomb bill of materials. So we handle those uh, scenarios. Uh, in two words, it's just an ERP product which helps uh, enterprise companies. Fantastic. Real quick, our chai question for this video is, do you know what SAP stands for? Uh, Rakesh is not gonna tell you. If you know in the comments, let us know what SAP stands for. Uh, I've got friends who work in SAP in the Bay Area, back in India, and all I learned about is they're the biggest company that you don't really know, but works behind the scenes and runs everything else, right? Yes. So yeah, let us know in the comments what SAP uh, stands for, if you guys know. If not, um, maybe you'll find someone else with an answer for that. So Rakesh, um, SAP, one of the big famous tech companies, you know, obviously originally from Germany, but you know, also known here in America. Um, what tips would you want to give to people who are looking to get in a tech or development kind of role, especially in the Bay Area or a, one of those big name tech companies here in the States? So if your goal to get into a developer role in a tech company, the first thing that you'll have to master is your basics. Um, forget about all the fancy stuff, forget about all the um, fancy uh, frameworks, packages and all that, forget everything. Like make sure you have a good root built up because the one thing that the interviewer would look for when he's asking a question is how are you listening to his problem and how are you coming up with a solution and how are you gonna make the solution better or what is the complexity of the solution the time complexity the space complexity and how are you gonna make it better so you can do this with any language so most of the time when i speak to my uh, other students that uh, i went to school with they'll be like okay so the requirement is in um, c sharp the requirement is in java i don't know java i, don't, I only know python it doesn't matter because uh, the programming language can always be learned. It's only a matter of syntaxes. You can always learn those syntaxes. It's gonna take you like hardly a month to learn those syntaxes. But what you can't learn in a month is your data structures, is your, how are you gonna design a system? So those things, the design methodologies. So those things, that they require more practice and they require more learning. So work on those stuff, the data structures, um, the design and the principles behind those designs. So that's what you'll have to work on. And what you'll have to do is like, you'll have to work on those competitive programming. I can't stress it more. Uh, this is one big thing that we'll have to work on because competitive programming is what all the companies are gonna ask in your technical interview. So work on those competitive programming. There are so many sites out there. There's Hacker Rank, there's Lead Code, there's Hacker Earth. So go out there, search for the websites, and then start coding. Yeah, we'll have the links in the description for those as well. I've, yeah, we've shared those before. Those are great training resources. Um, Rakesh, that was an awesome tip. Thanks for sharing that. I think that's, yeah, some great foundational principles that people should definitely focus on. Uh, Rakesh, do you have any mistakes or lessons learned or a funny story or anything that you'd want to share just from your you know brief professional experience so far to, that you know you've learned that you want to share with someone else so when i was so uh, i came to us in uh, august 2018 so uh, as soon as i reached here i started looking at the job market how it is and how it was going so because it is a uh, parallel process uh, if you want to get a job uh, like next month if you start it now start the job search now definitely you're not going to get a job so it's like it's a it's a big process because you'll have to prepare for at least six months and then apply for at least two to three months to get a good offer in your hand so i started early on so that's one good thing that i did but one major mistake that i did was while i was applying to the roles i was like um, applying to the roles like blindfolded so one thing that i did not know was uh, how well to build my resume and how to write a cover letter like if I would say that most of the roles that I applied, I did not upload a cover letter mm. because it was an optional field. And um, back home, we don't require cover letters. It's like you upload a resume and that's about it. But here, cover letters play a role mm. and resumes, they play a role. And one major thing that most of the people that I see uh, make this mistake is 
they take the template and they start working on that uh, template to build their resume. But what they don't understand is most of the um, applicant tracking system, it's called ATS. When they look for the resume, uh, they require this resume to be in a particular template for them to process all those information. So every time you upload a resume to a job portal, it doesn't mean a recruiter is going to read those resumes. It will be going through a filtering system called ATS and only the resumes that is uh, apt for the job is going to be shortlisted. So if you're going with the resume, make sure you're reading the job description. So reading the job description is the first most important thing and see if it actually qualifies for your um, skill set. And then make sure you uh, define your resume in an ATS supported format and then add all those keywords. So uh, people who come from undergrad and maybe in high school, they know this stuff. Keywords are important. Like no matter, it doesn't matter what uh, sentences that you write. Uh, it What matters is those keywords that you have in your resume. So that's what the ADS is going to pick up. So make sure you have those key set, I mean keywords in your resume and then apply for the role. And most importantly, when you apply for the role, for each and every role, write a personalized cover letter. Mm -hmm. Why did you apply for this role? Why did you choose this company? And what do you want to do? And where do you see yourself after joining this particular role? It's something that you can add in your cover letters. Rakesh, those are awesome lessons learned. Um, thanks for sharing that, buddy. Um, I'm glad those didn't stop you from getting a job and you learned how to do that the right way, you know, and you're going to help other people with sharing that. Let's wrap up with this. So the Bay Area in America was one of the first places to institute the shelter in place and the work from home. Mm -hmm. um, so you've probably doing, been doing that longer than just about anyone here in America. Um, what's mm -hmm. that been like? I mean, that probably just started not long after you started your job. Just I want to yes. hear real briefly what that's been like and how are you doing and coping up with that? So I joined SAP in uh, by the end of February. And by the end of March, within a month, it was like they announced that uh, they're gonna uh, have the shelter in place. But I would say that SAP has played a big role in making sure that uh, we will have good experience uh, working from home. They made sure that we have all the equipments that we need working from home. Uh, so we have this product called uh, Guided Buying, and it is an um, uh, in-house product that we have. So they made sure that uh, whatever you need to uh, be efficient from your home, you can order it online, like, um, you know, like ergonomic chairs and monitors and all those stuff. Um, make sure you're comfortable. And even uh, when the time comes to come to work again, they even before that, even before the government said anything about it, they said uh, we will not be implementing, uh, even if the government says you, you can, you can uh, come back to work. So we will only be implementing in a stage by stage uh, mm -hmm. manner. Uh, so those kind of things, they made sure that all the employees are aware of it. And they even um, went ahead and set up a team, like a task force team, to monitor the state of this uh, issue and what is the impact of this issue and how well they can uh, accommodate uh, the problems with this issue and make sure that the employees are uh, happy doing what they are doing right now. Mm -hmm. So. I feel like um, it is one of the good choices that I made choosing SAP. Yeah, I'm so glad they're taking good care of you guys. That that makes me feel really good <laughs> as a guest, you know, in our country. So <laughs> me too. <laughs> awesome. Well, I'm glad. Yeah, I've got other friends who are SAP, and they also are having a, a, a similar experience. So that's good to hear. Rakesh, this has been an awesome conversation. I'm sure we could keep going, but um, we're going to stop it here. Uh, so much value. Um, again, friends, if this has been helpful to you, give a like and thumbs up to say thanks to Rakesh. Um, our friendly SAP developer tuning in from the Bay Area for us. Uh, buddy, stay safe, stay healthy. Um, we're gonna pull through this and hopefully things will get back to normal sooner than later. And if you guys have any questions for Rakesh, you can connect with him on LinkedIn. And yeah, Chai and Coaching, um, we wanna help you guys follow Rakesh's tips and suggestions. They're really gonna help you guys to be successful here in America. And yeah, we'll see you guys next time at Chai and Coaching. Cheers. Rakesh, thanks so much, buddy. Thank you so much, Rob.